Hello everybody, this is Freddy with Freddy Can Fly. Um, in today's Heli Tips and Tricks video, I wanted to go over with you guys how to properly set up the throttle link servo on a nitro based helicopter. Okay guys, so one of the first things we're going to want to do is we're going to want to take a look at our radio setup, okay? Now, before we plug this in and we start um, providing power and messing with some of our electronics, we want to make sure that the radio is going to be ready for um, the throttle channel setup, okay? So one of the first things we're going to do, okay, is we're going to turn our radio on. Let me get my throttle trim up here. And we're going to want to drop our throttle trim all the way down to the zero position, which your throttle trim, trim should be designated on your radio. Look through your manual if you're confused as to which trim is your throttle. But you're going to just drop it all the way down to the fully closed position, okay? Make sure our throttle stick is all the way down as well when we do this, okay? So once our throttle trim is all the way down, the next thing we want to do is go into the travel adjustment menu, um, and you'll see here on mine, my, my throttle values, which are indicated right here, have already been set for my specific throttle settings, okay? Make sure on yours they say plus 100 and minus 100 for our initial setup. These numbers will change but make sure that they're at this position um, at that time, 100 and 100, okay? Also, what we're now going to do is we're going to go into our pitch curve for normal flight mode, and we want to make sure that our throttle is at half stick exactly. Now, on every radio, these menus differ just a little bit, but the basics should always be there. You'll notice I'm in a pitch curve here. We want to make sure that we're at exactly half stick, and it should transmit 50 in... 50 out. That tells us that we're exactly midway into the channel or half stick. Um, we can look on our graph and we're in the half mark and we're also 50 in, 50 out. Make sure you get it to this point. Now what we can do is we can go ahead and turn our radio off at this time and make sure we don't bump that stick. We can leave it there. We're going to double check this when we plug back in to 90 the servo. Um, but just as a reference point, um, in between your steps, if you turn the radio off at half stick and turn it back on, it's going to remain at half stick. So get your radio set up to this point. Okay, you guys, so what we've done now is we've turned our transmitter on and we've set our throttle to 50 in, 50 out using one of the pitch curve or throttle curve menus. Um, make sure we're dead center for this, this part of the setup. Okay, now once we get dead center on our transmitter and we've provided power, um, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at our throttle servo, whichever is designated for throttle. Okay, and we're going to get our servo arms out and we're going to position those on the servo as close to 90 as possible. Now, on some specific applications, the heli will call for an actual angle that is um, off of 90. Um, and for example, you'll see here, that if this if this were to be 90 degrees where my fingers pointing you notice my servo horn actually curves slightly up um, on this specific helicopter make and model it actually requires for this servo to be off center from 90 a little bit um, so look through your manual and make sure you get the right geometry for this servo um, if you have to sub trim you can but I always recommend trying to get it without sub trim on your throttle servo um, especially when using a governor. So right now I'm at zero sub trims. I've positioned my servo horn and I've put my ball on. Um, now another good uh, key point to look at here, you guys, is this ball position. Okay, this is very important because this is going to affect the total amount of throw that's trans uh, translated down to the carburetor. Um, and what I mean by that is the further in your ball is the less throw you get and the further out your ball is the more throw you get and once again your manual should specify exactly what we need at this point in time um, so look at your manual look at the ball spacing hole make sure you get the right millimeter distance from center um, as required for the carbur or carburetor um, arm get that all set up also, we want to make sure that our servo is traveling properly. You know, there's no weird binding. The servo's not damaged. Everything's working. Um, just always a good thing to check. Okay, so. All right, you guys. So now we're going to take a look at the actual carburetor arm itself. Now, the same rules are going to apply to this that apply to the servo that we just barely put at 90 degrees at half stick or offset from 90 based upon 
what your specific make and model um, called for. Okay, so now at this point, um, this can be a little tricky to do, guys. Most carburetor arm shafts have this little tiny hole in them, um, right about here, which I think you, uh, hopefully you guys can see that. Um, but you'll probably want to stick some sort of an Allen key tool in there, or a screwdriver shaft or something to to help you hold it with one hand, okay? Because once you loosen this set screw, okay, it's going to separate these two, the arm from this um, shaft. Now, what you want to, what you guys are trying to achieve here is at the half stick position on the carburetor, which is that center position as we talked about before, okay? At that center position, we need to have this servo arm, or actually that's not, or the carburetor arm, sorry. We need to have the carburetor arm on the same exact angle, or as close as possible, that our servo centered at. So, um, to make that a little more simplistic, if our servo were to be set at 90 at half stick, we need this to be at 90 degrees and our carburetor to be at the half stick mark or the uh, center position. Now since mine on the 600 Nitro was slightly offset, you'll notice that at the half stick marker, my servo arm, or God, the carburetor arm, sorry I keep calling it that, um, the carburetor arm is going to be at the center position but it's going to be slightly angled. So get this set up once again based upon the manual for both the motor and the helicopter. Um, get this set up properly. Make sure that at our half stick mark or half throttle, our carburetor arm is at the correct um, angle to match our servo arm. Now, once you have this step complete, we're going to also look at the ball spacing as well. Now, your manual, once again, should specify whether we need... Um, you know the further out hole, the closer in hole. Some some uh, engine models come with with different style arms that have three holes, four holes. Um, mine only has the two, and my engine uh, did call out for the far, farther out hole. So make sure you get your ball link spacing correct. And once that's done, we're gonna go ahead now and make up the link for the carburetor. Okay based once again upon what the manual specifies it'll tell you the exact length length we need um, and chances are we're going to modify that length a little bit but get it set to what the manual specifies and we will continue on from there okay you guys so we've went ahead and once again returned our throttle channel stick to the 50 in 50 out position or half stick okay <clears throat> and at this point in time our servo arm should be at its neutral position or the center position or the half stick position whichever you refer and um, and then also our, uh, also our carburetor arm should uh, if we if we bring this over here to the center position okay it should be at about the same angle as our servo arm based upon what our manual specifies okay so once we went ahead and made up our link based upon the manual specifications um, what we want to do now is is look at our link and see if we need to lengthen it or shorten it. And it's really easy how we do this. All we do is typically I'm going to snap it onto my servo arm. Okay, so let me go ahead and pop that on real quick. Okay, and um, let me grab a tool here. Sorry, bear with me here. Let me uh, get this bad boy snapped on. Okay. Now, once you get this snapped on, um, the reason why I do the servo arm first is because the servo arm, if you center it at the 50 in, 50 out position, it won't move um, if I pull on it. The servo stays put, whereas the carburetor um, arm will move. So, what we're going to do is we're going to position our link on, and now, if, if you can just kind of slightly hover that ball above your carburetor arm and kind of use your hands to, to press it over... Okay, you'll notice if we just hover it over without snapping it in place but put a little bit of force on it, we can now look at our carburetor and see what position it's at, if it's at center or if it's slightly off. Now, if our carburetor is off from that center mark that we previously tightened it down to be, we're going to need to lengthen or tighten our link to um, you know, accommodate this arm here, and it's going to slowly move this arm either this way or this way based upon whether we lengthen or tighten. 
So go ahead and modify and adjust your length until you get that, uh, that throttle link arm to where at 50 in, 50 out, we've got the servo at our 90 degree position or whatever the manual specifies for your angle. We want our carburetor arm to be at the half open position or the 50 in, 50 out position. And then we also want our link arm to remain pretty, you know, nice and straight in between the two. Um, now, a couple of things I did find if you have a hard time at this point getting that just right, you may have to actually adjust the ball link spacing. Um, and that's also going to come into play when we start messing around with the throw of the servo. So get it to this point right now. Um, once again, 50 in, 50 out, half stick. We should have the specified angle of our throttle servo, specified angle of the carburetor arm, the right uh, ball length spaces from the center of the servo and the center of the carburetor arm, and have this link adjusted to the proper uh, proper length so that all that stuff meshes well together. Um, basically, our end result should be that this carburetor uh, notch position should be at the 50% mark or dead center. Okay, so go ahead and get to this point, and we will continue on from there. Okay guys, so at this point in time, we went ahead and um, snapped our link on to both the carburetor and the throttle servo, okay? Um, and what we're looking for here, sorry, camera went out of focus. What we're looking for here is now we're gonna do a throw test and we're gonna see if we're getting the proper amount of travel. And it's real simple how we do this. Um, we're basically gonna give it full throttle and we're gonna give it full negative throttle or throttle all the way down and remember when we're doing this our sub trim should be all the way at zero okay now what's gonna happen guys is we're gonna get our radio and we're gonna go into the travel adjustment menu okay and when we enter that menu we have a high position and a low position which should be currently at plus 100 and minus 100 okay now what's gonna happen is if we move our throttle stick all the way up and it's getting to the point to where there's too much throw and we're getting bind on the servo, you want to immediately drop your, your, your throttle down. Don't let that servo sit and bind up. But if we start to move it up and we hear that binding, what we're going to do is go into the travel adjustments for the high position, okay? And you're going to increase or decrease that number until you line up the high mark on the carburetor, okay? And you get it to the point to where it touches that mark fully, but it does not buzz or bind. Um, and typically what I'll do is I'll give it clicks on the travel adjustment until I hear it bind, and then I'll back it off by two to three clicks, and you should be just about where you need to be. Now, the same can be said. We're going to go all the way down, okay? And we're going to adjust in the travel menu, travel adjustments menu for the low position on the throttle channel the same exact way. If we're throttling all the way down and we're getting binding, or the servo wants to buzz, um, as it's doing right now, if you guys can hear it, we're gonna we're gonna back our throttle off a little bit, and we're gonna go into the travel adjustments menu for the low throttle and increase or decrease that number until we can get rid of that buzzing, but the marks line up perfectly on that carburetor. Once you have this done, you should be able to go full throttle with no binding or buzzing, and low throttle with no binding or buzzing and it should be fully open to the designated fully open mark and it should be fully closed to the designated fully closed mark. Now when we return to half stick or 50 in 50 out it should be exactly half or the designated halfway mark on the carburetor. Once we have this done um, basically our throttle channel uh, servo linkage and carburetor setup should be basically complete Okay guys, so that's basically going to complete the basic setup of the throttle, the carburetor um, linkage setup. Um, if you're running nitro and you guys are, are inexperienced, this is uh, one of those really big key factors that's going to make or break the experience for you. If you've got these basic three requirements met, then your servo to carburetor linkage setup is complete and your motor should be working properly. Um, and that's basically going to complete the tutorial, you guys. So as always, thank you very much for watching, and remember, if Freddy can fly, so can you.